dear brothers and sisters who are watching our live stream tonight in the Facebook Live with LLCM Edmonton. Good evening to all of you. You may not be physically present with us here, but let us bring the Word of God to you and share the good news of the Lord. Okay? Oh, we bless your name, Lord. In 1 Samuel 12, 24, it says, You also must obey the Lord. You must worship Him with all your heart and remember the great things He has done for you. Amen? If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Amen? Are you excited tonight?
to worship God tonight with song of praise. In Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. Let's continue to worship God tonight. Let's groove, let's dance. Lift up your hands to the Lord tonight. Thank you. 
worship God tonight. In Psalms 91, 4, it says, He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Amen. Let's continue to worship God tonight. Okay. 
our strength may fail, O oh Lord, but you are our strength. Your grace is sufficient for us in our weakness. Lord, we recognize your presence in our midst tonight, Lord. And we continue to worship you, to adore you. Thank you for you are the faithful God that we are serving. Thank you for your goodness. Indeed, you are good and faithful to us. We worship you. We adore you, Heavenly Father. We recognize your presence, Holy Spirit. And Jesus, as you sit on your throne, we continue to pour our hearts in worshiping you, in loving you, in adoring you. Lord, we just enjoy your presence tonight, Lord. And we worship you, we adore you, Lord God. We magnify your holy name, Lord Jesus. We want more of you, Lord, in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and for your faithfulness. We give you praise, honor, and glory, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you so much, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you blessed today? My prayer is that the Shekinah glory of God will fall upon this place. Hallelujah. So we are grateful to the Lord for uh, bringing us here together again to worship God in spirit and in truth. So we would like to acknowledge the presence of God in our midst. And we pray that uh, we may able to uh, exalt the Most High through our songs and our worship unto the Lord. So may I ask you, Jimbo, to uh, connect my uh, HDMI. So for today, I'm so very happy that uh, a lot of people are watching now via Facebook, our live stream. Uh, those who are watching right now, we are welcoming you in the gathering of the saint in the sanctuary of Li uh, Melbourne Community Life Center. We are the Light of Light Christian Ministry, and we are a family, and we are grateful that we may be able to share the word of God to you through a live stream. And we would like to uh, give special um, attention or uh, mention that some of our viewers today had some difficulty in life. So today we're going to study some, some reason and consequences why we suffer those pain and we experience those pain. And uh, I'm going to show you today the message that we entitled, Overcoming a Sinful Habit. Do we have the picture here? Yeah. Overcoming a Sinful Habit. We know that we are now a Christian. We accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. We are redeemed from the power of sin. And we are now free from the bondage of curse. And we believe that through the blood of Jesus, we may be able to succeed in every way where the enemy is trying to pull us down. And I believe through the word of God, we may be able to comprehend the truth that give us and enlighten our spirit, our mind, and our thought that we are on the winning side. Amen? We are on the winning side. So the Lord wants us to uh, overcome our sinful habit. Maybe some of you are asking the question, why still I'm doing the sin? So I'm going to read here a verse in Romans chapter 7, verse 15. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. According to this verse, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. This is the problem of many people today. In Tagalog, hindi ko maintindihan ang aking sarili. Dahil ang mabubuting bagay na gusto kong gawin ay hindi ko magawa. Pero ang mga bagay na ayaw kong gawin ang siya kong ginagawa. And this is the problem today because we are facing a dilemma of uh, interfacing the, the issue of sin in our life while we are now free from the bondage of sin. My question is, are you asking this question? Why I continually sinful in spite that I am a born again in nature and striving to live a godly life in the eyes of God. 
and why I felt that this scene constantly controlling me, enslaving me, and empowering me. In spite that I desire to live for God, a lot of convicting thought is coming to our mind. And whether we like it or not, we are at war of ourselves, its nature, and its desire to fulfill the loss of the flesh. We have a picture here saying that we are a bandage in sin. The sin uh, chain us and enslave us so that we may fall again in the hand of the enemy. Because Satan is trying to gain access in our life into saying that you are mine again, my son. So I want to show to you that through this message, we may be able to comprehend the truth that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and he shed his own blood too to save us not only from the power of sin, but also from the curse of sin and the poverty. So we know that through sin, we may fall, but through the power of the blood of Jesus, we believe that we are free, we are victorious, and we can walk lively and victoriously in the highest of the heavenly. Even Paul himself in Romans chapter 7, 15, shares with the church at Rome his desire to do the things that are pleasing in the spirit of in the sight of God, but because he is a new creature with some old habit. And this is the problem of many people today. Although we belong to the family of God, we are now born again in the spirit, but we have this what we call the old habit, the old nature. So we constantly sinning and repeat uh, repeating uh, this this uh, sin in our life, and this is a constant war, a struggle a confrontation between his spiritual nature and his carnal nature that is causing him much distress. And my brother and sister, don't think that just because we are saved that we are immune to sin. Believe me, this is the problem of many people today. I know that some of our uh, viewer in our Facebook account and our YouTube channel had also the same problem because we are struggling with sin in our life. Every believing Christian always struggles with regard to sin and how it controls us and enslaves us so that it may continually hold, uh, to have a hold in our life. You know, sinning loses your will to live out of this realm in the presence of God. And sin entangle to blind you of your spiritual nature. Believe me, you had this what we call spiritual heritage. And because of sin, we doesn't see the, the nature of this heritage in our life. And that is to dethrone, and also that because of sin, Satan is trying to dethrone Christ from the center of our life. It will blind your mind of the pleasure the world it may give. So according to John chapter 8, verse 34, I'm going to read it here. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, to those who are watching, listen to me, in our live stream, everyone who sin is slave to sin. Yes, that is according to Jesus. In Tagalog, sumagot si Jesus, pakatandaan ninyo, ang gumagawa ng kasalanan ay alipin ng kasalanan. Are you still doing sin? Are you still bandaged in sin? It is like uh, you are a drug addict. You cannot avoid the drugs. It seems that sin uh, control our lives. And we need, uh, we have a picture here. A hand bandaged by a rope, then a slave to sin. This picture shows that all of us, while we are here on this physical body, the, 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 the power of sin is trying to control us again. Since we are already born again Christian, receiving Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we believe the power of resurrection in our life, the enemy is trying to make a hold in our life. So I know that through the blood of Jesus, through the promise of the scripture, we may experience victory each and every way while we are walking with Christ. What being slave? You know, enslavement stole you your authority. Again, en enslavement stole you your authority because we are a sons and daughter of the Most High, you have the authority. Then the enemy will steal your joy and to sip you of your strength. It has the strength to defeat you if you get too close to it with excessive confidence in your own strength. And this is the problem. And the Bible teaches that sin involves a condition in which the heart is corrupted and inclined toward evil. So this is the problem of many Christians today. In this picture... I'm going to show you that sin has four characteristics. 
sin has four characteristics. Number one, sin has self-sufficiency instead of faith. That means that we are entrusting everything in our own strength rather than believing that God can work all together in our, in our, in our behalf. And number two, self will instead of submission. We're trying to exalt ourselves more than anything rather than submitting our own life unto God. And that is sin. And number three, self-seeking instead of benevolence. This is the problem of many people today. We're just always seeking what we can get rather than what we can give. What we can give to God. Could you possibly imagine the heavenly father already gave his only begotten son. He manifested into flesh and later he died on the cross to save us from the power of sin. And because of this, what we call grace, the unmerited favor, we receive the grace of God in our life without any exchange. It's free. We are saved by the blood of Jesus and we never pay anything for that. So we need to recognize that through the power of the Spirit, we may live a victorious life because we seek the power of the cross for our life. So instead of self-seeking, instead of uh, we have to be very benevolent what we can give unto God. So we receive already salvation. Now we are attending the Sunday service and we are watching the live stream. And we're expecting something in return. Yes, we believe that the Lord will bless us in many ways. But in this time, we worship God. The Lord bless us six days a week of many things. Now it's the seventh day, Sunday. We worship God in spirit and in truth. What we can give to God? Our singer praise, our spirit worshiping the, the, the living God. And that spirit of the living God is mingling with our own spirit. And that is the truth. We can give everything to the Lord since we are very thankful for everything we have. And number four, self-righteousness instead of humility. This is a problem of many pastors today. I'm talking with the, with the people who are watching right now. We have to be very humiliated in the eyes of God because this ministry is a ministry toward the lost. The mission of the church is to reach the lost and to make them a disciple of Jesus Christ. So we have to be humiliated unto the eyes of God because, you know, authority flows through submission and humility, again, through, authority flows through submission and humility. So we have to give ourselves to the Lord and recognize that we cannot do anything without the help of the, the heavenly. You know, the essence of sin is our claim to be ourselves. You know, sin is no matter what people call it. You know, according to Romans chapter 3, verse 23, this is a very common verse to many people especially the son and daughters of the Most High. It reminds us that all I have seen and come short of the glory of God. I'm going to read it. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. According to this verse, For all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. Again, For all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. So, we cannot comprehend the truth until we are free from the bondage of sin. Tagalog, Sapagkat ang lahat ay nagkasala, at walang sino mang nakaabot sa kalwalatian ng Diyos. Our people are desiring to, to bring back their life unto God because they recognize that they are sinners. They are empowered by the curse of sin and its poverty over their life. So we must comprehend the truth that we cannot live our own life apart from God. You know, sin involved the denial of God from whom human beings draw their life and existence according to Acts chapter 17 verse 28. The consequence of this revolt is death and the torment of hell. Death is the ultimate penalty imposed by God for sin, based on Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And sin affects the inner life. Hence, we find throughout the scripture a growing emphasis on the idea of the sinful act, you know, as not only a fact in itself, but also as a revelation of an evil disposition on the part of him who commit the act, based on Genesis 6.5. You know, sin signified the rupture of a personal relationship with God, a betrayal of the trust he places in us. I have a picture here. I'm going, we're going to show the picture here. Sin is essentially rebellion 
against the rule of God. Believe me, people of God. And those who are watching right now with our live stream. Sin is essentially rebellion against the rule of God. We are designed with a great capacity for God. And sin and our individuality are the things that keep us from getting at God. So God deliver us from sin. We have to deliver ourselves from individuality. To present ourselves in a natural life to God and sacrifice it until it is transformed into the life by obedience. Hallelujah. Do you believe that you are already transformed by the power of His Spirit in your life? Do you believe that? Amen. Yes, because through the blood of Jesus, we are now experiencing the full grace given by the heavenly, and we experience the power of the resurrection in our lives, and now we are free, we can walk with Christ each and every day victoriously. Although we have a lot of time dealing with some problem, but we can deal the problem in a spiritual way because we have Jesus in our heart, we know that God is with us, and God promised, even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil, for you are with me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life. In Tagalog, ang ganda ng promise, susundan ka ng biyaya ng Diyos. Claim it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand of praise. To God be the glory. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 2. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them, and the cord of their sins hold them fast. Oh, okay, nakita natin, ano? That the sin just holding us. Uh, Tagalog, ang sarili niyang mga kasamaan ay kukuha sa masama at siya'y matatalian ng mga panali ng kanyang kasalanan. We have a picture here. How could you possibly imagine the enemy is trying to control your life? That you have this rope in your hand, that there is rope in your feet, and so on. That he can he can move you along in 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 his own way, and that is the problem of many people today. They doesn't know that they are controlled by the evil one. They are controlled because of their lustful desire. You know, Paul agonizes over his own imperfection. We read it in Tagalog. Gusto kong bumait pero di ko magawa. Gusto kong bumait pero di ko magawa. That is the problem. And recognize his own imperfection. And realizing that in his flesh dwells no good thing. And he has the will to carry out God's word. But, remember this, carnality appears to be a stumbling block. In other words, his spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. Brother and sister in Christ, no matter how many times we come to church, there will be times that we will be weak. Don't get me. You know, there are two things I want to share on how we, to, to recognize that we need to overcome a sinful habit. So overcoming sinful habit, number one, we have to recognize that you have a dual nature. Again, believe me, you have a dual nature. You are a spiritual being, but also you are a physical being. The desire of the flesh is uh, confronting the desire of the spirit. And the desire of the spirit for your life is confronting the desire of the flesh. And now, it is, it is a matter of choice in your life. So you have to choose. Kung ano yung pakakainin mo, yun ang magiging malakas. And that is a problem. So we have to recognize that even Adam, the effect of Adam's sins in the Garden of Eden, caused God's image to be tarnished in man, resulting in man losing his spiritual fellowship with his creature, with his creator. And consequently, every person born into the human race was born with a sinful nature. And that's what Psalms 51 verse 5 means. Behold, I was shaped iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. I want to show you the verse. Psalms 51 verse 5. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. In Tagalog, ako'y masama na, buhat ng isilang, makasalanan na ng ako'y iluwal. So we inherit the sin of our poor parent, and that is no other than Adam. That's why we experience death, we experience illnesses, we experience poverty, all of which it is because of sin. So this is the problem. As long as we are in this world, we will be at war with the old sin nature that dwell within us. 
And the sin nature simply make us desire the things of the world and rather than the things of God. I'm not saying that we do not need things of the world because we have to live. But the things of the world are not to have dominion over us. In other words, we are in the world, but we are not of this world. And the sin nature is at war with God, while our spiritual nature is at war with Satan. It's trying to subdue the others. So in this war that we are in, there will be no peace treaty. Again, if, you are, if, the, if Satan is declaring war against soul, our soul, there is no peace treaty. And one will defeat the other and spiritual bondage is when people lose their connection with God. This is the problem. Sometimes we lose our connection with God. That's why we have this what we call Bible month. We have to interconnect ourselves again to the scripture, interconnecting ourselves to the presence of God by just uh, analyzing, reading, and meditating the word of God so that we may find out the truth and God's answer to our situation. So we have to comprehend that we need God and we cannot live apart from God. And according to this picture, a believer is at war with sin. Am I right? We as believers, we, we are at war with sin, but while the unbeliever is a slave to sin. Again, a believer is at war with sin, while the unbeliever is a slave to sin. Spiritual bondage is internal. We have some internal conflict happen within. It is a matter of choice within. Who will win? The spirit or the flesh? But it affects and controls every area of your life. And the enemy makes you defeated in every area of your life. Who, are who among you lose a job right now? Health. Who among you lose a relationship? The evil is trying to defeat us into taking us away those things in our life. So Moses had lost his connection with God also. It drove him to become a hunted murderer. Being internal, it is hidden from view. You know, you're there, others don't. But the consequences are also hidden, at least delayed. Others often until it is too late to change the outcome. You know, spiritual bondage is caused by sin. And the enemy that is no other than Satan is after your mind. The enemy is trying to control your thoughts and taking all means to force a dominance over you and control you in all your way. Do we have this picture? Yeah. Can we uh, analyze what the picture is? Sometimes you are watching TV or in a modern day you are using your cell phone and wasting all your days browsing the news feed of the Facebook. And the enemy is influencing your mind. Many, many negative and many evil thoughts you can see over your news feed. Sometimes you see in your news feed and you, you cover your cell phone from your wife or from, the, or from the people around your house. So we have to be very cautious that the enemy is now starting to dominate your thought by controlling it using the entertainment of this world and the entertainment you will see over the news. I'm not saying that Facebook is wrong. It is wrong when you spend 24 hours a day uh, browsing the news feed, not doing anything inside your house. You're supposed to wash your plate. You're supposed to uh, do everything inside the house. But now you're wasting your time and you are addict in Facebook. In our live stream, those who are watching right now, can you please, can you, uh, Analyze that sometimes we are being uh, contaminated by this world by just entertaining our thought, our mind, by the things we, we read from our news feed, news feed over the, the Facebook. So this is the problem of many people today. In our next picture, it says that what consumes your mind controls your life. Again, what consumes your mind will control your life. So we have to recognize that. Okay, and number two, in overcoming sinful habit, we must recognize that Satan is waging a war against your soul. Christ won us 2,000, more than 2,000 years ago. And Christ won win us on the cross of Calvary. 
when He shed His own blood to redeem us from the power of sin, and He died and He rose again from the dead to show that we are victorious and we can walk freely with Christ each and every day victoriously. So we have to recognize that Satan is waging a war. I told you, there is no peace treaty when we are dealing with the enemy in the spirit. So we have to be very prayerful when we start our Bible month. We have to pray that we might root our spirit, our faith in the scripture so that when the enemy comes, we have, uh, we have a defense against his thought, uh, negative thought and against his word. You know, in every war, there is usually casualties. Many saints have lost their effectiveness as a result of receiving spiritual wound. Many people are very wounded right now. And whenever you sin, nature prevents you from studying the Bible, and you are in danger of being wounded. Whenever you don't come to Sunday school, uh -huh. prayer meeting, uh -huh. and Sunday service, uh -huh. to church on a consistent basis, you are in danger of being wounded if you have not been wounded already. People are being blinded by the spirit of this world without knowing that they might be wounded in the time when you are not prepared to pay the consequences of not preparing yourself, not reading the Bible, not uh, spending a time in prayer. So we are waging a war. And all of us are now uh, waging a war against ourselves, especially our lust, our, our uh, physical flesh. So according to First Peter chapter 2, verse 11, According to this verse, dear friend, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. In Tagalog, mga minamahal, nakikiusap ako sa inyo. Believe me, tinabi na nga yan dyan. Bilang mga dayuhan at pansamantalang naninirahan lamang sa daigdig na ito. Talikuran na ninyo ang mga pagnanasa ng laman na nakipagdidigma sa inyong mga sarili. So, what is the worst sin? Since now we know that we are waging war against the enemy and our enemy is Satan and his cohort. And they are waging war against our soul. Is it destroying the life and body? Sometimes we are thinking how, how we, how we uh, worsen our situation when we commit sin. Is it destroying the life and body by drinking? Pastor, is it true that uh, drinking is sin? Well, we're going to read Ephesians 4.30 because, you know, the, the, the Holy Spirit is, uh, you know, we have to commit ourselves because it is God himself who, who uh, control ourselves rather than we are controlled by the, the alcohol. Is it, is it uh, prostitution? It is a worse sin? Is it adultery? Is it homosexuality, or could it be alcoholism? Could it be drug abuse? And God can forgive all this sin. Believe me, God is a forgiving God. If you want to come to Jesus because you are now bondage of sin and do you don't have peace in your mind, I urge you, come. And Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. Believe me, because in the presence of Christ, we may obtain peace and we may walk freely according to the nature of the spirit. You know, according to this uh, picture, the worst sin is to reject Christ and the finished work of the cross. Again, what is the worst sin a man could ever commit in this life? That is to reject Christ and the finished work of the cross. What do we mean by finished work of the cross? It is finished. Test telestai. It is finished. I already done my part. The world is already saved through my own blood. And I believe through the blood of Jesus, we are saved. And our name is written down in the book of life in heaven. Do you believe that your name is written down in the book of life? Amen. Amen. So we believe that we are partaker of the kingdom. We will experience the full grace of God when we, when we will be in heaven to be married with Christ and to experience the glory of the heavenly father. Let's give God a hand of praise. To him be the glory, Father. We lift you up because we believe one day we will be with Jesus in heaven and we will see you face to face. However, there is one sin. Uh, I want you to believe this. The worst of all sin, according to what we have read, rejecting God's love, and some may not be guilty of the sin listed above, but they are guilty of rejecting 
God's love. So, you know, here in Romans chapter 6, verse 6, according to this verse, we know that our old sinful nature or sinful self were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our life. We are no longer slave to sin. You know, the answer of the heavenly when Christ died to the cross and he resurrected from the dead, now our old sinful self, we have to crucify it to the cross with Christ so that we might lose its power in our lives. So in Tagalog, alam natin na ang dati nating pagkatao ay naipako na sa krus kasama niya upang mamatay na ang ating makasalanang pagkatao at nang hindi na tayo maalipin pa ng kasalanan. The only answer given by the scripture so that we may be free from the power of sin, we must be crucified with Christ. I have a picture here, Galatians 2.20. I had been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me. Can I ask Sweet to come to the stage? To play the organ. Can we call sweet? You know, before we, before we close in prayer, I want to show you this picture. You know, through this picture, you will comprehend that we are already crucified with Christ. Do you believe that you are already crucified with Christ? So that the power of sin may no longer prevail in our life. May I ask everyone to close your eyes and now ask yourself, do I crucify myself with Christ so that the power of sin may no longer work in my life? I know that through the cross, through the blood of Jesus, that is the only answer given by the heavenly so that we may experience the full grace and we may experience the love and grace of the Lord and we may be free from the power of sin. I believe through the power of the cross, I encourage those who are watching right now in our live stream. We're going to pray for you right now. If you're watching intensely and the Holy Spirit is touching your heart, <clears throat> I know that the Lord is speaking to you and the Holy Spirit is convicting your heart. Actually, we're going to sing again the song, Katapatan Mo O Dios, before we will recite the prayer of acceptance. We will see. We are now crucified with Christ. Can I ask everyone to stand? We're going to give our life to the Lord. Just comprehend what Jesus did on the cross more than 2,000 years ago so that we may be free from the power of sin. That we may walk with Him each and every day with joy in our heart, with peace in our, heart, in our mind, and we may walk victoriously according to His promise. We will sing the song katapatan mo. Katapatan mo, O Diyos, tunay at dakila. singing, I want you to hear the word of God well we heard the instrumental playing and now I want to encourage each and everyone also those who are watching the live stream to give your life back to the Lord we have a simple prayer here we can see it in our screen and I want you to follow the prayer so that if you are not certain that Christ is in your life now you can receive Christ. You can accept Christ in your heart. And according to promise in John chapter 1, verse 12, you will become a child of the living God. You want to follow the prayer? And this is the prayer. Dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I have done many things that don't please you. I have lived my life 
for myself only. I am sorry. And I repent. And I ask you to forgive me. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for dying on the cross. For my sin. For my sin. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Come into my life. Come into my life. I receive you. I receive you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. You did what I could not do. You did what I could not do. For myself. For myself. I come to you now. I come to you now. And ask you to take control. Of my life. my life. And I give it to you. I give it to you. From, this day forward. From this day forward. Help me to live. Help me to live. Every day. Every day. For, you. For you. And in a way. In a that, way pleases that pleases you. I love you Lord. I love you. And I thank you. And I thank you. That I will spend. I will spend. All, eternity all eternity. With you. With you. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Katapatan mo, Diyos. Katapatan mo, Diyos, tunay at dakila. Ang pag-ibig mo'y wagas at walang kamantay sa aking puso. watching our live stream right now they give their life unto the Lord they follow the prayer of acceptance we declare oh God by your spirit they are now the sons and daughters of the most high thank you father for your grace for your love and we exalt you Lord because we believe that through the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of his resurrection I declare oh Lord that we are free from the bandage and we are hugged by the heavenly. And we are longing to hug Jesus by our own hand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. See you soon. And we believe, Lord, that we may experience you in your spirit. There in heaven. But we're going to give you a, 
a song of praise day and night. Thank you, Father. Because we are longing to see, Lord, one day all the people in your presence is giving their songs and worshiping you in spirit and in truth. We leave you on high, Father, thanking you and bring you back all the glory and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone says, Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Let's give a hand offering to the Lord. And uh, thank you so much for, for the, the word today. Uh, through uh, the word today from the, our Lord to Pastor Perds. So if you have your Bibles with you, let's turn into the book of Leviticus in chapter 27, verse 30. And it says here, A tithe of everything... From the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees belong to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. So, so uh, if you have your tithes and offering, let's hold it. Let's pray for it. And it says here that uh, uh, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the, from the trees belongs to the Lord. And it is holy to the Lord. So, Everything that uh, God has given us and all the blessings that he has given us, it came from the Lord. So it is right for us to give our tithes to him. So let's hold our tithes in offering and let's pray for it. Father, we come to your throne with humble hearts as we are thankful for the blessings you give us daily. Lord, I pray that as we give you our tithes and offering this evening, that we all think about the fact that the tithe is yours. It belongs to you. May we never withhold what is yours. Please accept this tithes and offering with gladness, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Pinagpalang araw po sa inyong lahat at ako'y natutuwa sapagkat uh, nalalapit na po ang buwan ng September kung saan po ay magsisimula po tayo ng ating Bible Month. Mahalaga po ito para po sa bawat isang membro ng Light of Light Christian Ministry sa pagkakaroon po niya ng uh, lifestyle para po sa kanyang uh, buhay spiritual lalo na nga po sa Bible reading. Alam ko po kasi na mahalaga ito upang tayo makapagsimula ng uh, personal connection with God. Sa salita po ng Panginoon, sinasabi po niya na upang matuklasan at makilala natin ang lubos ang Panginoong Yesus, ay kailangan po natin magsimulang magbasa ng salita niya. Ito po sa John chapter 5, verse 39, You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. Ayan. Bawat scripture po sa Bible ay nagpapatutuo tungkol po kay Jesus. Kaya kung nais po nating lubos na makilala si Jesus, magsisimula po tayo sa pag-aaral ng kanyang salita. Maganda po kasi kung bawat pamilya ay nagsisimula po ng pag-aaral na ito upang tayo yung lumago sa ating buhay spiritual. At higit po dyan, sapagkat sinasabi po na ang salita ng Panginoon ay siyang nagtuturo sa atin ng kanyang daan, nagtutuwid sa ating pagkakamali at nagtuturo ng daan para sa katuwiran. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 Every scripture is God breath and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Kaya mahalaga po yan. 
Kaya ito pong salita ng Diyos o sa ating Bible month ang siya po nating pagtutuunan ng pansin. Gusto ko pong pakita sa inyo na may mga elemental component ang ating Bible month. At ang una nga po dyan ay eh, yung tinatawag na Bible reading. A scriptural reading of the Bible every day, we will commit time either early in the morning or in the evening. Kaya yung pong mga magsisimulang pumasok sa trabaho, pwede silang magbasa ng salita ng Diyos o kaya naman sa gabi bago sila matulog. Magpo-provide po kami ng tinatawag na daily Bible reading plan na magiging ininyo pong basihan ng mga babasahin bawat araw hanggang matapos po ang isang buwan. So yan po yung isang elemental component ng ating uh, Bible month. Ang pangalawa po dyan ay uh, ang devotional. Sa devotional, uh, you have to prepare a notebook, ball pen, and we'll note what we have learned from our reading. Ayan. Mahalaga po kasi yan. Kasi alam niyo po kasi during our uh, daily devotional, eh, may sinasabi po ang Diyos sa atin. Kaya mahalagang tayo magbigay ng pansin dyan. Kaya we have to connect ourselves with God each and every day in our daily devotion. Tuturo din po namin kung paano po ang gagawin ninyo sa pagsisimula ng inyong pagdedevotion. Mahalaga po yan para kayo ay lumago sa inyong pananampalataya. At ganun din po, isa sa elemental component ng ating Bible month ay yung pong memory verse. Uh, to memorize Bible verse each uh, once in a week and we'll recite it in our Bible study group. Kaya yung pong mga nasa Bible study group, hinihikayat ko po kayo na bawat isang linggo ay meron po tayong uh, memory verse. Kaya doon po sa mga Bible study, very exciting po yan kasi bawat isa po ay magre-recite ng isang verse kada linggo. Napakadali naman siguro po kung pitong araw pa ninyong i-memorize yan at hindi naman siguro mahirap gawin kapag sa Diyos yan gagawin. Dito po sa Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged word. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrows. It judges the thought and attitudes of the heart. So nakita natin ang salita ng Diyos ay buhay at mahalaga po yan. Kaya sa ating po pagsisimula ng ating Bible Month sa darating po na September ay magtutuon po tayo ng pansin sa salita ng Diyos. Kaya hinihikayat ko po na ang marami ay mag-antabay upang uh, makasabay po tayo sa mga gagawin dito. Mahalaga po yan upang maging lifestyle natin bawat araw ang pagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos. Marami pong salamat at ang dalangin ay pagpalaing kayo ng ating Diyos na nasa langit. And we may close this service blessed and touched by the heavenly. Thank you, Father. We bring you back all the glory and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Bless tonight. Amen. Amen.